when people asked him about singing, he said, well, for me, it's like breathing. I don't have a choice. <laughs> When he passed away, it was very overwhelming for me to, to understand the impact that he had on so many people. And the testimonials were less about his singing and painting and more about who he was as a human being. He's always been a New York boy. Tony lived on Central Park South and 6th Avenue overlooking the park. And Central Park was his backyard. It's so beautiful. I love Central Park. I've always felt very fortunate about my life. I've been blessed with the fact that I have a very strong passion. I just love to sing and paint. And as far as I'm concerned, I never worked a day in my life. He had that incredible energy that gave us all the notion of possibilities. I never followed a trend. Ever since the 50s, I just sing a certain way, and it works for me just by being yourself, you know? It's like Fred Astaire used to say, if it doesn't swing, I'm out of here. He always had a pencil and a pad in his, in his jacket. Whatever it was we were doing, whether it was recording or what, I, the pad would come out and we'd be sketching. It was constant, it was 24-7. I'm doing a sketch of you. Oh, all right, yeah. My philosophy is the more you go back, the more ahead you go, because you're really learning from only the best that lasted. But when he met people like David Hockney, there was an affinity there. pencils. It just works great, you know? Yeah. Everett Kinsler was a very well-known portrait artist. He did most of the president's portraits that hang in the White House. He went to school with Tony. They became extremely great friends and worked with Tony and then do portraits of Tony. These aren't opposites attract. These are like people who attract. It's the art that pulled them all together. I found out that Sinatra was at the Paramount. He was my big idol. Frank said that he was the best singer, announced it to the world, and for Tony, that was monumental. When I walked into the dressing room, the first thing he said was, what is it, kid? It became the beginning of a magnificent friendship that I've had throughout the years with Mr. Sinatra. Frank would be very generous in giving him gifts. I mean, a watch that's engraved in the back or the autograph. The best GD singer. I mean, it's like so, you know. It's so great. Gotta say, GD. Tony always had an appreciation for an artist. Artists came to him and learned from him. They learned from each other. We've done 56 duets. Should we do it again just like that? Yeah, that was a good one. Feel? Get that groove going, yeah. just that feel. Every artist Thank you. at the end of the session signed their sheet music that they worked off and it's really impressive. The, the, the personal notes or a drawing or those kind of things. Okay, let's hit Stevie. Stevie Wonder, after we did the duets, gave him his harmonica, which is an amazing piece of history as well. Great singers and great musicians. I think of a person that has committed himself to the betterment of humankind. He's a great spirit of consciousness. He was always very proud of marching in Selma with Martin Luther King. We have a great letter from Martin Luther King to Tony thanking him. This is not something that was the thing to do to be cool. Harry Belafonte called him up and said, would you come and help us? And Tony said, right away. On his 75th birthday, 
I reached out to everybody I could. Write a testimonial, write something for him, and it was all the presidents, all the directors, all the artists, all the people that were important to him, and it's, it's an amazing collection that gives you real insight in terms of what he meant as a person, beyond an entertainer. You know, Marty told me that Tony was so inspiring to him in the early days that he'd have a picture of Tony on the camera, <laughs> just to remind him of the roots of it all. He wasn't left nor right. He was a humanitarian, and I think that just being on the right side of history from 18, fighting in the Battle of the Bulge during World War II and liberating a concentration camp, coming back a pacifist. For decade after decade after decade, he was relevant because of his attitude. That I always said I never managed a career, I managed a legacy. What a great sunset.